everyone. Welcome to another Coffee and Contemplation brought to you by Spotlight Recovery. It is May 19th. We've got a short but sweet reflection today uh, all about giving without expecting anything in return. Uh, I relate to this one a lot. I'm sure a bunch of you will too, so let's get into this. May 19th, giving without strings. And he well knows that his own life has been made richer as an extra dividend of giving to another without any demands for a return. From As Bill Sees It, page 69. The concept of giving without strings was hard to understand when I first came into the program. I was suspicious when others wanted to help me. I thought, what do they want in return? But I soon learned the joy of helping another alcoholic and I understood why they were there for me in the beginning. My attitudes changed and I, and, and I wanted to help others. Sometimes I became anxious as I wanted them to know the joys of sobriety, that life can be beautiful. When my life is full of a loving God of my understanding and I give that love to my fellow alcoholic, I feel a special richness that is hard to explain. And this inspiration is from the AA Daily Reflections. Yes, like I said, it's short but sweet and it's got a really good message to it that I just resonate with entirely. I very much have had this experience uh, through my recovery, so it was really cool when I found this one and gave it a read. Um, I So for me, back when I was using, that was one of the biggest addict behaviors for me was doing quote-unquote favors for people, uh, really just to then get more out of them in return. <coughs> And there were a couple of stipulations to this uh, <laughs> that made it really slimy. Um, one was, uh, well, and just so in general, like to start off, whenever anybody would ask me for help, that was the first thought was, am I getting more out of this in return? Not even like you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Like, no, if you're not going to scratch your my back longer, then I'm not going to do it. So the my first response to that of being asked to do a favor was awful <laughs> i'll do you a favor but you need to do me a better one or i need to get something more out of this or i'm not even going to help you there was the first response uh not very loving and spiritual if you ask me um the second was then if i would do a favor for somebody uh, i would then put that favor that they owed me quote unquote um into like into the bank, you know, so I would keep tabs, I'd keep track of favors that I did for people. Um, so then I could turn around and call in those chits when it best suited me, and then get them to do whichever favors in return for me. Uh, there was another there's another behavior that is really not so loving and spiritual. Um, the other thing too, with that, w which is kind of funny is uh, I knew that I was going to need help from people because I was a disaster. Like my life was just a wreck. I was just a walking wrecking ball. So like I knew I was going to need help from people constantly. So, <laughs> so that was a part of where that, uh, giving with strings would come into play for me is because I knew I was going to need help from somebody at some point for something. So uh, half the time I would look at then being asked to do a favor for somebody as an opportunity for my future self where I'm like, oh yeah, okay, I can help this person now because I know some other disaster is going to happen in my life and I'm going to need help. So perfect. I can put one in the bank right now. So I would do that. So that was another thing that resonated, uh, for me with it too. So bottom line, uh, I, totally gave with strings as an addict uh, any support or favors I would ever do was always conditional and it was always looking for what could I get out of it how is it going to benefit me in these selfish ways so now we'll talk about the perspective shift and then how that changes in recovery and what they're talking about in this reflection that I really like um uh, so, oh, sorry, there was another piece here. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I'm going to read through it, and then we're going to get to that point, because they talk about that transformation in this paragraph, and I really like that. Um, 
So I'm going to cover the second, the bulk of the, the second paragraph, the bulk of the paragraph here, and then go back up to the quote at the end to finish it off. And just a reminder, if you're listening audio only, we've got um, a physical copy of the or a digital copy of the reading in the description so you can read along with it. You can save it on your phone. So check that out. Um, so anyway, um, the concept of giving without strings was hard to understand when I first came into the program. I was suspicious when others wanted to help me. I thought, what do they want in return? Uh, and so of course this was exactly how I felt and thought and looked at this uh, because that's how I would have acted. <laughs> you know, it's a, uh, it's synonymous with that line, spot it, you got it. I don't know if you've ever heard that before, but I love that line of just the thought of when you see something in somebody else that bothers you, there's a really good chance you do it too, and that's why it's bothering you. You don't like the mirror reflection. So that's what stood out for me in this. When people in AA early on, or therapists, people at my treatment center, like just whatever in recovery, wanted to help, I was always suspicious. I always had that lack of trust. And that was the thought. What do they want in return? What are they going to get out of this? Because that was how I did favors for people. So of course I'm going to think that way because that's what I was doing. So that stood out for me so much in that quote. So I love that. Um, just because, yeah, I resonate with it very much. Um, so now we get into this transition piece in recovery that I was foreshadowing earlier. But soon I learned the joy of helping another alcoholic and I understood why they were there for me in the beginning. My attitudes changed and I wanted to help others. Sometimes I became anxious as I wanted them to know the joys of sobriety, that life can be beautiful. So that's, we've got another topic here developing now. When my life is full of a loving God of my understanding and I give that love to my fellow alcoholic, I feel a special richness that is hard to explain. So I'm just going to focus on... Uh, this piece of learning the joy of just helping the other person without expecting anything in return. Um, I'm just going to let all those other subtopics there kind of go, um, but please throw them down in the comments and if something stands out for you with them and how you resonate with them. Um, so that transition piece and this perspective shift of doing the favors without expecting anything in return, that definitely took uh, some work. It took some eye opening. It took some repetition um, for that to be able to get through my head and me to be able to make that change. And the biggest reason why and what I'd learned from all of that was because I felt that if I didn't have all these people to reach out, like to help me, if I didn't manipulate and make these people help me and support me, that I wasn't going to be okay. That was the root fear of all of this, why I will help you with expecting something in return and all of this stuff. It all came down to one of those biggest root fears, maybe arguably the biggest one that I have as a human, let alone an addict, which is that I'm not going to be okay. So I would, so the thoughts could look and sound like, uh, I'm going to do the favor for you because I know I'm going to need to ask you for a favor later. Because if I haven't already helped you, if I just ask you for a favor, there's no way you're going to help me on your own volition. Why would you? So it's same when they're talking about here earlier. What do they want in return? Or with those feelings of like, why do you like me? Why do people love me? Why are they being nice? It's that same coming from that same place and that gut feeling of like, no one's going to help me when I ask unless I make them some way. So I'm going to do that. Um, there's no God that loves me. The universe doesn't love me. It's not going to take care of me. I know I'm not going to be okay. So I need to start putting some things in the bank of how I'm going to make myself be okay and make people give me help. You know, does this make sense? So that was the thing that really popped out for me um, through this whole process. And that was the biggest lesson that I learned through going through all this. Yeah, this is... <laughs> this got a lot heavier than I thought it was going to be, but oh man, it's so good. Such a good topic and point. So I hope you're resonating with it. So anyway, that's what I'd learned through all of this. And then through understanding that fear, that's when I was able to then start doing that work on it. And a part of that work could look like little test examples of uh, doing 
that favor for somebody without expecting anything in return or asking people for help or for favors when I hadn't done something for them first. I needed to disprove that negative addict dialogue in my brain that I wasn't going to be okay, that nobody was going to help me, that God didn't love me. I needed to do this work to combat that narrative and give myself proof that these things were not true, that all of that was not true. Uh, and so that can look different for everybody, but just doing those exercises in this process, really helpful and really important and made such a big change in me. So big, and that's what allowed me to get that perspective shift that we always talk about in recovery, right? Uh, addiction is a, de a disease of perception. Therefore, we need to shift our perception to then go through a recovery lens now to see the world differently and through a better, healthier view. So that's how I was able to do that. That's what that looked like for me. Um, the last one, and I'm just going to wrap up with this. Uh, when they talk about it, I learned the joy of helping another alcoholic, and I understood why they were there for me in the beginning. So beyond that, helping another alcoholic, just helping another person, just being a better, giving, contributing member of society. Um, my old sponsor, now this obviously isn't part of the 12 steps, ish uh but he gave me this great challenge once we'd completed our step work which i loved because step 12 is ultimately doing service and favors without expecting anything in return right giving the whole thing away so when i got to the 12th step and we'd finished all the rest of our work the personal challenge that he gave me was try to do favors for people without anybody knowing that you did them so doing the favors completely anonymously, totally with nobody ever having any idea, never take the credit, never put that spotlight on yourself. Oh, I loved that. I thought that was just such a good challenge. It was such a great perspective. And I did, and I have, and I, I, this is a good reminder. I am going to now, because I can't remember the last time I did that. Um, but that perspective and that challenge was so great. And looking at things and doing them that way just, oh, really, really resonated with me a lot. I really liked that because that's just the kind of person that I want to be. I want to be a better person. And Lord knows this poor world could really use some better giving, helping people. We could all help each other more. So having that perspective and doing that of favors, now we're talking, this is complete opposite of my addiction. That's another thing we talk about on this podcast a lot. Um, if you act one way in addiction, a general baseline for recovery oriented behavior is acting the polar opposite of that, doing a 180. And so this is a great example of that. Talk about a 180 from going from in addiction, I will only do favors for you if I'm getting more out of it to I'm going to do a favor for you and you're never going to know it was me. Oh, Man, so much power in that. So much power in that perspective. I love that. So don't uh, don't try to hold yourself to this like impossible ideal of doing this every day and all the time. We're human. We're not saints. We have lives to live. So it's don't put this pressure on yourself now to be like, oh my gosh, I have to do this all the time. But just do it when you can. Know that it's there. Keep that perspective. Keep that a part of, if you want and want to be this way, uh, that new recovery-oriented behavior. So there you go. That's what I'm going to leave you with for today. So thank you so much for checking out today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Check out the description for all the other ways that this podcast and Spotlight Recovery can support you and ways you can support Spotlight Recovery. I do private recovery coaching with people. So if you're resonating with this, please reach out. I'd love to see if there's a way that I can help support you and help you grow in your program. Okay? Um, so have a blessed 24. Hope you're able to get out there and give without strings. And we'll see you again tomorrow.